Welcome back to the show. You're listening to GSD Podcast. Today, we got part dose. Okay, so, so you guys meet, um, she talks you, really, I don't know, she talks you into, but presents this opportunity. Okay, dude, you've got all these skills. Let's team up. Why don't you come uh, uh, be a part of my real estate team, and then let's combine forces and put this together. So you guys have a real estate team now today that has done over $350 million in sales. So just, just so our listeners, and maybe if you're not in real estate, if you're in real estate, you, you probably know what that means. Your mind's probably blown by hearing that. But if you're not in real estate, your average real estate agent does about $2 million a year. So your average real right. estate you know, agent in a 20-year career only does $40 million, and you guys have done $350 million in gross volume. So, so it, I mean, it, it, it's a work that 10 agents can't even do within their whole entire career. So you guys have all, all obviously been uber, uber successful in, in all aspects of your life. Um, not saying that it hasn't been easy. I mean, you know, again, we, we all have those lows, and we, you know, um, but that's what really defines us, right? So let's kind of talk about that. Like, like you guys, what, what does your real estate team look like today? What are you guys doing that's crushing it? Um, you know, what are the roles that you guys play if we do have any of that, whether it's a husband and wife or maybe anybody that's in a partnership on a team, you know, how do you guys separate your roles to make sure that uh, you're as effective and as efficient as possible and all that good stuff? So I want Monica to answer that, but let me just say real quick um, first so everybody understands. Um, I've only been involved with Monica as a realtor, um, and I've been in, in real estate as an investor myself like a lot longer, but as a realtor, I've only been a licensed realtor for about two years. I've worked with Monica, though, as like a, you know as a marketing guy on her team for, for almost three, um, and um, – what I really wanted to say was is that all that production is Monica. You know, I mean, I, I can accept you know probably close to a, a little under a hundred million dollars with what I've done um, in the last three years. But you know, all that before that was all of her, man, by herself. You know, blood and sweat tears. Yes, she had some buyers agents that come that come and went, came and went, but she mostly did all that on her own. So, I mean, she is she she you know, I'm Josh. I know you're familiar with the Mike Ferry organization, the MFOs and all that stuff. But like, you know, Mike is uh, Monica is a legendary MFO agent. She's not in Mike Ferry anymore. Legendary. But, I mean, it, it's Josh. Josh, I'm not kidding you. She still gets emails, Facebook messages, you know, people all the time reaching out to her saying, "Oh my God, Monica." I still watch your listing presentation videos. Or can you help me? Well, and, and, and I'll just say this, and then I want Monica to take over. But like, I went to one Mike Ferry seminar, okay? And I'm sure Josh, you're familiar with Mike Ferry seminars, but it was one in San Diego, and you know, it's a it's a dog and pony show. You know, it's like a three ring circus. There's five thousand people there, and literally walking through the event with Monica was like walking the the red carpet with an A list movie star actress, like. People were running up to us, Monica, can I take a picture with you? I mean, it was like, what? I mean, I was like, dude, what is going on? It was the weirdest shit I've ever experienced in my life. I was like, I was like ashamed. I was like, oh my God, I mean, I shouldn't be ashamed, but I was just like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> you know, so I mean, that's, that's the way Monica is like revered in Mike Ferry. Now she's not long, she's no longer in Mike Ferry. She left Mike Ferry in 2013, in the middle of 2013, but she's still her image there and, and, and what she accomplished and as much as they uh, promoted her, it still resonates with a lot of people there. And he still has her um, perfect listing presentation all over Google. You know, So when people are searching that stuff, and I'm sure they still refer to it because it was so good. But with that said, uh, Monica, talk about real estate. <laughs> I don't know how I can stop that. You can. Um, well, right, currently we have, it's, it's Jay and I, and we, we both have the ability to do sales. We have a buyer's agent, we have an executive assistant. Um, as far as what works for us, honestly, right now what I believe is working with us is our sphere, our database, um, a lot of what Jay does, which is his digital, ma digital marketing um, magic. And, and also, too, it's just thinking out of the box. Like right now we have a, a, an investor who's looking to invest a, a decent amount of money and we're looking at all different types of avenues. So I think it's just keeping yourself open to different types of business, especially within the real estate realm. And you know, your traditional, of course, residential, uh, multifamily. But also, what else? What else can you do? What else can you? How else can you create income? Who can you talk to? And you know, what's really cool, Josh, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well. It's like as soon as you open yourself up to possibilities as to what's, like, what else can you do? How? What are possibilities? It's like people show up. People show up, and you have conversations with them. As soon as you start 
opening yourself up to them and asking them questions. You say, hey, this is, there's another opportunity. Well, what if we can get this together? How can we put this together? And so right now, we're opening up all these different possibilities, completely different than what we've ever done. And it's absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it's just really, really cool. I mean, we've had, um, we've had when Jay and I first got together, we had our, our geez, the most amazing year ever. We just had deals come into us left and right, left and right, left and right. Um, last year was a little bit slower. This year uh, started a little slower, and we're just ramping back up, and it's just amazing stuff. It really, truly is. I don't know how. What else you want me to expand on, or how else you want me to expand? Um, well, okay. So, so when you say that, like, like, okay, we're, 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 how else can we do business? How, you know, how else can we, you know, give value to our clientele? Like, like, give me an example. Like, I mean, are you creating like maybe mastermind groups with your clientele to help them all grow their business and support each other with, with, with some sort of forums? Or, I mean, what do you mean by that? And like, maybe what's what's a, a live example of something that you guys are doing now that's out of the box, that's different, that's just crushing it right now? Like, well, for example, the one of the investors that we have that we're working with, they're looking to invest anywhere from 20 to 30 million. And okay, so what does that look like? Who, what kind of networks can we can we involve ourselves in that would allow them to invest that type of money? So we're we're actually opening up to agents out of state. We're looking at commercial agents. We're looking at um, opportunities that we've never even been involved with before. And this is a completely different realm, and we, we don't normally do this. We normally single family, multifamily, and, and that's it. And so this is putting us in front of other people that, like for example, we put them into um, brand new duplexes in South Los Angeles with one of the, the big time guys out there in South LA. He's actually the biggest multifamily guy in the United States. Yeah, and, and that opened up another different type of relationship there. So it's... What's really cool is that we're, it's, it's almost like, it's, I had one of my coaches tell me this one time, and I, it always stuck with me, and they, she's like, you know, I remember at the beginning, I was like, God, I don't know how to, how to expand my business, and I'm, I'm really working hard, but I was, door, I was door knocking nonstop, and I was calling on the phones, and I felt like I kept hitting a wall, I kept hitting a wall, I'm like, I don't know what else I can do, I feel like I'm, I got my kids, I got this, you know, how much more time can I invest in this? And she's like, look, Monica, this is what we got to do. Da, 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 da. And then she goes, I want you to think of it this way. When you when you stretch a rubber band, what happens? And I'm like, well, I don't know. It breaks. And she goes, no. She goes, you stretch it, and it never goes back to its original size. So right now, you're just stretching yourself. It's a little uncomfortable because you're stretching. But it, you're never going to be that same person that you once were. So allow yourself to learn. Allow yourself to grow, and you'll get through it. And so that's what I think about whenever I'm like having these moments of like, okay, well, what else? How how can we do this? And I'm stressed or whatever it is. It's like I'm just growing more. That's all. And so we're growing in different ways. Like with this investor, we're dealing with talking to completely different people, and just opening up different avenues. It's it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's it's smart, right? You leverage those relationships and and. Um, you know, I did that with the hedge fund when, when hedge funds were huge, uh, uh, you know, three, four years ago, I, I had just connected amazing relationships with these hedge fund managers. So then I would set them up with other teams in other states and I would train them, you know, train the agents of the, of the process and how to do it, whatever. And then I would just, you know, collect 10%, right? Like nine or four referral fee, I'd make it so good where it's worth it for them. And, but you're just collecting 50, 60 checks at 10% every single month coming in and. Um, it, right. it could be pretty mind blowing. I'm not licensed in those states anyway, so it wasn't. Exactly. Well, well, yeah, so yeah, it's pretty pretty cool. No, yeah. I love that out of the box thinking. So let, let let's talk real quickly, and then we'll kind of get out of business because I really want to talk about some of the other stuff you guys got going on, which is which is pretty awesome. So, um, uh, you've done 350 million sales, dude. You've got a huge past client database. Like like so, you said okay, your past client referrals are 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 big. Well, most people that, that uh, at least are maybe real estate uh, uh, related or, or maybe on this call, whether they're not in real estate, but they might be a new entrepreneur that maybe doesn't have that big database. Outside of that, that's killing it. What is killing it um, for new business for you guys right now? Is there anything, whether it is incorporating maybe some of the digital marketing, maybe it's Facebook ads, you know, whatever, like what is for brand new business coming in, something you guys are doing right now that's slaying it? You go ahead, Jay. I just yeah, spoke. so so I'll answer that. Um, that's a great question, Josh. I really wish I had a perfect answer for it, but um, my my take, and I think you and I talked a little bit about this before when you and I spoke uh, a couple weeks back, is that um, the market is about to shift seismically. And what I mean by that is that, again, this is for the real estate world, but it really applies to entrepreneurs and startups and everything. But um, the millennial, and you, and you know this, the millennial generation is a generation of people that truly value. 
uh, online reputation. They truly value um, you know, how you look and appear online. And when you compare or contrast that with, let's say, baby boomers, right, which still control the majority of the purse strings in North America, um, and yes, they're becoming a little bit more sophisticated and more digitally aware, but they don't trust the Internet, okay? They trust their friends. They trust their family. They trust relatives. Um, so those people, when they look, you know, to get a realtor or to, um, you know, seek uh, real estate investment advice or whatever, they usually go into their family networks, whereas um, the, the millennial generation is more reliant or more, more able to just go online and start searching, right? So to answer the question, you know, we're getting and seeing, and again, I track all this, um, a lot more business from Yelp, okay, and not just Yelp. Uh, but Google, you know, so how does your online reputation look? So if you're a beginner, a beginning agent, realtor, uh, even have a, a brand new business, you know, you're just an entrepreneur, you own a restaurant, whatever, it is absolutely imperative that you focus your energies and your efforts on developing and cultivating a five-star online reputation. You know, Monica and I have, I think, and, and, and I haven't checked in the last three months, so correct me if I'm, I apologize if I'm wrong, but at one time, three months ago, we had most five-star reviews on Yelp of any real estate agent in Southern California east of the 605 freeway. So, you know, that what that means is we have any, and you know how Yelp, you know they're out. They're filtering algorithm. It changes every day. I mean, like one day we might have 75, and the next day we have 66. So, but when you have a lot of um, five star reviews on sites like Yelp, and and, and Zillow is okay. I mean, I don't want to go down the whole Zillow and Trulia thing right now. But um, if you if you have a lot of five star reviews on Yelp or five star reviews on Google, it will really help you with the millennial generation because again, they literally go online and they search you. And if they see that you're somebody that has five-star reviews and they read a couple of them, they won't even call another agent. There isn't even going to be an interview process. They're going to just pop you. And again, I track all this stuff, um, you know, through our, our call tracking numbers that I have on Yelp. And we also do videos. We do we do some pretty sophisticated marketing on Yelp. But like they'll tell you, hey, look, you know, I read about you on Yelp. My wife and I, we want to meet you. We want to, uh, you know, my parents just died, and I'm, I'm the trustee, and I got to sell my parents' house. Or if it's not that, it's like you know what. Um, we're we're uh, first-time home buyers, and uh, and we don't work with a lot of buyers. That's mostly our buyers agents, but you know that we get that too. So it, it, you know, to answer your question and not to sound like a stuttering idiot, it's really really imperative, if not crucial, uh, as a as a as a person starting out now to truly to build and you know an awesome and, and cultivate an awesome uh, reputation online. Because I mean, I think in the next ten years. And, and, and Josh, I don't know what your thoughts on this are, but um, as, 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 as some of the bigger endemic sites, you know, really start developing better tools, and, and of course you know Zillow and Trulia will eventually, um, if you're a realtor that has a poor online reputation or you burn people, you're fucked. I mean, you might as well retire because that, that essentially at some point in time is going to be all that people rely on. You know, as the baby boomer generation shifts and they, you know they start losing losing hold of their purse strings and they go into retirement and you know they're not making purchases anymore and the millennial generation and a little bit of our generation, you know, generation X generation, um, you know, takes over. I mean, it's 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 you better have a good pristine five star online reputation or you know you're not you're going to get asked out. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, your your client isn't just you know Joe Blow. Your client today is Joe Blow with eighty thousand Twitter followers. So you know it's, it's <laughs> dude. I I, I, think, I think the big one of the biggest there's a lot of mistakes. I think one of the biggest mistakes real estate agents do is they wear the real estate hat. The only time you right. wear your real estate hat, dude, is when you're negotiating contracts or you're on a, you're Exactly. On a, wear your consumer hat. Like, here's a prime example. I bought a new audiobook this morning. Um, I listen to my audiobooks. I buy them through iTunes. I don't go and search them on iTunes, dude. I went to Amazon and I typed in the topic I'm looking for and I looked for the best book with the best ratings. Five, and I'm not looking for like four or five star ratings. I'm looking for like 500. Um, right, exactly. and I didn't even buy it from there, dude. I went to iTunes, but that's the first place I go. So, so right. wear your consumer hat, you guys. Like anything, like like just start paying attention. Like, okay, how am I doing business? If I'm going to buy a product, how do I analyze the product? What sparked my interest? What type of due diligence? You know, at what point did I bring in this sales guy? Now, I think I think it's critical, dude. Um, and, and so so I think that our listeners probably get the importance, uh, um, at least a, a after you explained it of it. But let's talk about how you do it, because like, um. I mean, it could be difficult, you know, like, like Zillow, for example, where they got to create their own username and login and go in there and do it. 
You know, right. and then, you know, I got to the point where I was like, dude, I will get you a twenty-five dollar Starbucks gift card, like <laughs> bag in or just well, we in. Well, hundred dollars. I go up with a hundred dollars, and some if they're retarded technologically, they still can't do it. And you know this, right? Like even even Yelp, it's like it's not it's not. Bro, I have I have ten hacks. I can give you ten different hacks. I've tried everything. You know, like we'll literally grab their phone from them. You know, when they're in our office with our transaction coordinator and say, give me your phone. I'm going to create a Yelp account. You know what I mean? It's literally like download the app so, to the phone. So is that what you do, like, like to be successful with it? Like, are you at the closing table and like, hey, dude, um, you're probably not calling your client, dude, but you're like, hey, you know, I, I need, I, I need this, and here's why. Let's do it right here before you leave. They're closing. They're probably excited. You know, they're gonna get busy with moving and doing it. Is that how you're successful with them? I mean, do you like, like, is there a point where you systematically uh, go after them in your business and and just kind of tell us what that looks like? If there is. One. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, that's happened a couple of times, but no, I mean, we we have, you know, a, a productized and systemized, systematizes it from a standpoint of like it's literally our executive uh, assistant's job. You know, when a trans transaction starts, we find out, you know, if they've ever written right away. We she, we find out if they've ever, uh, if they're a Yelper, you know, as a quote unquote, or if they, uh, you know, leave reviews on Zillow or also on Google. Those are the three that are primary. Um, and then if they haven't, you know, that's part of her process is literally like making sure that they set up an account because you know the last thing you can do um, in getting a review from somebody at the end of the transaction is to ask them at the end and they haven't had an account set up because we both know that that's when Zillow and Yelp and all the other sites will uh, filter you because that they know they call it a rave right it's somebody oh you know they had a happy service even if they didn't um, and they come on and they say oh Jay and Monica are the greatest things since sliced bread blah 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 five stars and then boom within two two or three days the Google algorithm filters it and says this is a rave it's it's probably bogus it pulls it off you know and what people don't understand is is that once you're filtered dude you're done yeah there's no value there you know and again I'm not gonna get into yelping the mafia and blah 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 but you know at the end of the day it's absolutely imperative however you figure out how to do it and uh, it's clearly as you said Josh using the power of technology and leveraging it and building it into your systems you've got to get reviews from people you cannot possibly afford to not have a happy customer not leave you a review and and you know again where do you leave the reviews to me the reviews have to be on Yelp they have to be on Zillow and they have to be on Google you know there's companies I use a company called BirdEye I mean you know I don't want to make this call like you and me geeking out and talking all these different technologies they're out there um, but BirdEye is awesome because they build you a Google indexable site of all of your reviews. They compile all your reviews. They take Yelp, they take Google, they take Zillow, they take Trulia, they take you know all the little bullshit sites. Like if somebody went and rated you on uh, Yellow Pages or White Pages or White Spark or any of those things, you know, and they compile them all. And and the beauty of what their technology is is that as they compile reviews. That site that they build, um, you know, they trick, you know, what Google's um, uh, uh, meta tags, and 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 so the site actually builds momentum and actually indexes. So now, if somebody Google searches, you know, the Monica Diaz team or Monica Diaz or Jay Campbell or whatever, there's a very very good chance that that site that they built is, is on page one if it's anything to do with reviews, you know. And we both know, right? Like people search you when you when you when you and you're and you're big enough now in your market that you you know it's not as relevant um, as it is for us because obviously there's way more agents here and you obviously dwarf from all the stuff you do but it's much more competitive here from a, you know just a volume of agents um, that helps us you know if somebody researches us and then they find right away right there you know second or third ranking there's that site there's all those five star reviews compiled on that right there then you know. I'm, I, I'm taking a chance that they're not some digital, you know, uh, genius, and they can see that it was just, you know, a cookie cutter site archived with all the reviews. It still lets them say, "Oh my God, there's 160 five star reviews for Jay and Monica." Yeah, dude. You know what I mean? So it's like it helps. It just helps, and then boom, you know, it's much more, much more impression when we when we talk to them. Yeah, and I, and I think you know, it's not just you and I and Monica saying, "Hey guys, this stuff works," you know, because people might say, "Oh, it doesn't work in my market." Well, you know, look at look at NAR stat right now. 72% of home sellers are only interviewing one agent. The, the, day, exactly. the day and age exactly. of interviewing two, three agents. And it's not because they're lazy. Um, no, it's because they, they, they can sit at home, sip in their coffee in their freaking pajamas and get all this information. So, um, you know, and you guys, here, here, here's an example of how you get reviews. So everybody that's listening to this podcast right now, you know, we put these free podcasts out here for you guys to gain information. It's free. So like everybody's listening right now, like go on to iTunes, go on to Stitcher, give us a five-star review. Put in positive comments. That's what allows us to keep doing them for free, right? So when you get honest with people, like when I get honest with my clients, I'll just sit there and say, hey, this is what grows my business, and I do this to provide opportunities for my family. Um, right. Here's the importance of it. 
And then once I kind of tell the important thing and kind of uh, connect with them emotionally, they get it. And it's, it's more apt to do it. So just like the listeners here, do like, you know, you know, you guys, you know, we do have this free content. I mean, this is how do I make money on a podcast, dude, um, is by positive reviews, is by growing the listener base. You know, so that's why I'm always begging and, and asking or, or even the listeners on this show. That's why I'm always asking you guys, like, look, go to iTunes, pause this, go to iTunes, go to Stitcher, give a five-star rating, give a five-star review, put some positive comments. It takes you 60 seconds. You know, I spend 10 hours and our guests spend a tremendous amount of hours delivering this content. That's how we get paid um, and grow our business, right? So um, I'm a big believer in being kind of that shameless self-promoter too, right? So, uh, uh, all right, dude. So, so I want to get into um, some of the other stuff that you guys got going on. So you, you've got your, 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 uh, um, fitness fab 40 or fabulous, uh, fabulously fit over 40. So, so this is, this is something that you guys co-founded together. Tell us about it. You know, what, what is it? What are you guys doing? You know, what's, what's your message? You know, what, what are you doing to, to, um, you know, improve lives? I mean, what, what's, give us the lowdown. Mark, you start. Go ahead. Well, what we did um, with Fabulously Fit Over 40, uh, what our goal is and was is to help people. And, and actually, it's not necessarily geared. I, I, I know that the, the name says Over 40, Fabulously Fit Over 40. But it's really geared towards anybody who's looking to improve their health and fitness and vitality. It's, it's for people who truly, truly want to learn the proper forms of training, diet, nutrition, mindset. It's very much all-encompassing. And it's opened up doors to many other different um, sources as well, like SOAR. We're doing a lot. I'm not kidding. There's so much involved. You, you've almost you got to Google FabFitOver40.com. There's so much information in there. And we're able to help so many types of people. Anybody can go on there. There's a slew, slew of information there. And, I mean, Jay's a great writer. He deals I – mean, the, the guy can help transform anybody's physique, help them feel and look better. Uh, my expertise is mainly mindset and just allowing people to um, to be able to, to tap into their inner greatness, like you say, and and live a life of joy. Really, that's that's my my set. I don't know if you want to expand yeah, on that a little yeah, bit I more. Yeah, I do. I do because that that's really where it starts, dude. Like like you know, we'll just kind of uh, use Jay for an example. Like he might not be where you know uh, um, where he is now, and you were the one that helped drive him or push him to get him out of that slump by changing his mindset, shifting his mindset. Like I think it all, I think like 90% of success is mindset. Like, like, dude, you're not like anybody that's ever died. Anybody that's ever done a show. Now I've never done it to the level you guys have, but I have competed in bodybuilding and anybody that's experienced that, like, holy crap, is it one of the hardest experiences of your life when you're eating nothing but like plain grilled chicken breast. They can't even put barbecue sauce on like steamed broccoli for like <laughs> four months straight, dude. And your, your blood sugar's out of whack and you're dizzy and you have to train and, and, and to have that discipline to do that. You're never going to stick with it if you don't have that hardcore mindset. So I think that's right. critical. So, yeah. so, but it's the same. This is why I love this, this, this interview, dude, um, because it's all the same. Like what makes you guys so uber successful in your business is the same elements that make you uber successful um, in, in your health. I mean, it's all the same, you know. So, so right. what are some of those things that you do? Uh, maybe like in Jay's case or somebody else that that's just struggled, 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 and they pull out the which is a total freaking cop out, but the card of oh, I just lack the personal self discipline. Yeah, you know, like, like how do you how do you how do you? No, that's that's honestly that's a story. Remember, we're all programmed a certain way. Everybody has a certain program, and so you are what you tell yourself daily, regardless of, of what it is. If you're continually telling yourself, "Oh, you know, I, I can't do this," and "Oh, I can't do that," or "I'm going to try," look what I always tell Jay: there's no try. You either do it or you don't. And if somebody says they want to be healthy, quote unquote, you know, then they're going to do the things that are necessary. And if they're not, you can tell just by uh, on their actions, you know, and even how they speak to you. I can I can speak to somebody and tell tell them almost automatically if they're going to do what we ask them to do, because you can tell by people's responses. You know, just having I could have a five minute conversation with somebody and more or less, okay, well this is where your issue is. Blank, 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 blank. Um, with Jay, for example, like I knew innately who he was. Regardless, he didn't have to. I mean, he had a, a half hour conversation with me, telling me his story. But you know, I could tell based on his body language, based on who he was. And I don't know if it's a woman thing, but I more of an intuitive nature. I just knew. And, and there's things that you know innately about people and know about yourself. And when somebody is, is truly, truly committed to completing something, regardless of what it is, it, it, their language will follow through as well. 
So um, that's how I can usually tell with someone. Someone sits down, you know, they, they have a conversation with me. You can even tell that with clients in real estate. You know, you sit down with them. Are they actually 100% committed to selling their property or is this, is this just testing the waters type of deal? And in life, that's what it's about. What's your commitment level? Is your commitment level, this is what you're going to do, you're ready to move forward, you're ready to do this, okay, then these are the steps that are necessary. Do it like this, and, and there's no, you, you can't say you want to be healthy and you want to, you know, you want to do this and you want to do that, and then you're going to go out and you're going to have a dozen donuts. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all, unless, of course, you're carb loading. Then we're talking something very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I try to, you know, I, I try because I was a personal trainer for, for a brief stint before I got into real estate. And um, I would just tell clients because this is my own personal experience, right? Like I used to be morbidly obese. I lost 118 pounds, right? So then I was awesome. Good for you, dude. Yeah, thank you so awesome. much. So I wanted to kind of share that message with the world, got into personal training, all that fun stuff. And um, I just told people because people are like, oh, dude, I'm just not as disciplined. I'm like, look, that's like the big, like self-discipline is a freaking delusion. Like you just, you get clarity yeah. on what you want. And then you decide what sucks more, you know, like, like, like does, does being obese suck more than eating this donut um, and having right. this instant pain or, or does, do, does it suck more, uh, um, you know, not having that instant gratification from that donut and remaining obese. So I just always pick like what sucked more, but I had to get clarity on what I wanted. Right. And remember, everybody's different, though. Like, everyone's motivated differently. You know, you, that's great for you because that's how you look at you. Okay, what sucks more? So you're obviously motivated by pain. You don't want to have to go through the pain of X. And so for you, you're motivated through pain. What, how is someone else motivated? Some people might be motivated a little differently. So you've got to look at each person individually and see, okay, well, this person is motivated in this capacity. So this is how we got to approach it. What, so what are some of the questions that you ask to figure out what their motivation is? Yeah, honestly, it's more about, I, tell me about yourself. Tell me what your goals are. Tell me what your goals are. Tell me what you want to accomplish. Who are you? I want to know who you are. I don't know you. I don't know you from Jack. Tell me who you are. And by the way they explain who they are, it can open up so many doors as to where their, their patterns are, where their programs are, and, and the issues that we can fine-tune to create a better life for them. Because, like you said, you know, I, I honestly believe and this is what I explained to Jay when him and I first started getting together, and he was he was in amazing shape back then. And I used, you know, and he we would have conversations about people in the fitness industry, and the way I see it is like it's great, it's fabulous to look in shape, but what good is that if you you don't feel like you you're complete inside? You you know, you look at yourself and you think you look like crap. What good is that? It doesn't make any sense to me. It makes more sense to me to, to be happy, to be filled with joy, and, and then work from that capacity and say, okay, well, this is how I'm going to transform my external, you know, aesthetic look. Yeah, love it, love it. So, I mean, you know, Jay, so, so dude, you, and you're also, I mean, you write for Iron Man Magazine, you write for this, you're a brilliant writer, you know, you know, you, you know your shit, dude, you're, you're one of the best guys, best-selling author, probably the most knowledgeable guys um, um, in TRT, um, and hopefully I said that right. Um, yeah. You what, what what is TRT? Um, you know, what do you got? What are you doing with that? Um, I know you teamed up with Dr. Osborne recently, and you guys are kind of uh, going on this new journey as well with this and, and educating the public. So so you know, educate me, educate our listeners on, on kind of what that is, what you're doing, what your book's about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so real quick, first, I'm not a best-selling author, but I will be, right, Monica? <laughs> I believe so. I mean, from everyone, who's actually read, from everyone who's actually read the book, um, it would be hard to imagine um, that that isn't the case. But um, just, just, just as a correction, um, I, I have actually uh, been involved in a couple of books that in the past um, as kind of a not quote unquote um, not using my name, but as a ghostwriter involved in books that were best selling. So you're technically right. Um, I've been writing. I've literally been writing um, since I was 21 years old. Um, I, along with my buddy, my really good friend, um, who's ultimately going to be involved in, in the TRT book, uh, Mike Cernovich of DangerAndPlay.com, um, and his site is very, very famous. Um, if you're not familiar with it, I definitely ch uh, challenge you to uh, start reading it. It's an awesome site. It's a mindset site. It's mostly for men, but his message is pretty awesome. Him and I started um, about a year and a half ago uh, a podcast on testosterone replacement therapy, a.k.a. TRT. Um, testosterone replacement therapy, to give you a brief history, has been ongoing. Um, there have been men that have written books, uh, mostly doctoral type uh, level stuff, um, in the last 15 years. 
Um, the first book that was written on testosterone was called the testosterone, uh, the testosterone syndrome, uh, and then the second version was uh, the testosterone solution by a doctor by the name of Eugene Shippen, and he wrote that book. I think uh, I don't want to misquote, but I think it was like in the early 90s. And anybody that was using testosterone replacement therapy uh, under the care of a, of, a, of a good physician in the early 90s was very, very slim. Okay, there was very, very unlikely. Other than Dr. Shippen, there were very few doctors around the world that were qualified or even capable of writing a script for testosterone. So what's happened in the last five years, and I use the last five years because that's when it's really become in, in vogue in, in America especially, is that um, low testosterone has become observed um, clinically uh, in the DSM and also in, uh, in, in the, uh, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the endocrinology, the, the textbook for endocrinology, which is really what governs all the uh, male symptoms of aging, um, it, it's become acceptable to uh, prescribe testosterone for men as they age um, for various reasons. Um, the issue or unfortunate issue that you probably have seen in the news in the last like two years is that uh, some men um, have had heart uh, issues. Um, I would call them vascular events, um, and that's what they're referred to in the book. Um, unfortunately, because we live in such a litigious society, we have all these um, you know Shylock attorneys all over the place, always trying to become opportunistic. Um, they jumped on some of this science, and they started to go after physicians. They started going after some of the pharmaceutical companies that were prescribing the testosterone or, or producing the testosterone products, and. You've seen that if you're anybody living in any major city or coastal population center, you've probably seen ads or heard them on the radio or most likely seen them on TV about attorneys going after uh, you know these doctors and these pharmaceutical companies and saying, hey, if you use testosterone, you may be eligible for a uh, you know recovery. And, and, and honestly, it's all bogus. The data that they used um, to support their findings was actually done on 65-year-old men, actually 65-year-old and older, who already had pre-existing conditions and heart disease. All of this is very much explained in my book. Um, so just kind of segue to the book and, and, and explain, you know, the the whole current environment with TRT. Um, it's very simple, Josh, for you or any guy in any major city to go uh, through, you know, on Google and, and search uh, low testosterone or TRT or whatever. And, uh, and and to find a doctor that will write you a script for testosterone. Okay. The problem um, is that there are very few doctors, not just in North America but globally, who truly understand um, how to prescribe testosterone to men for the reasons that they should be prescribing testosterone. Now that doesn't mean that there are certain men out there um, that have actual medical conditions like thyroid disease, um, damaged testicles, or whatever that would require. Um, testosterone because their body doesn't produce testosterone anymore. But it's 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 a very esoteric subject. It's very it's I don't want to say it's complex, but to truly understand like all of the different issues that result in a man's uh, endocrinological system once they're prescribed testosterone, you really have to have an awesome doctor. Hence, why I linked up with Dr. Brett Osborne. Now, Dr. Brett Osborne and I met on social media about 19 months ago, and. Um, he had just published his book, Get Serious, which I recommend all of your readers. I don't care who they are, realtors, entrepreneurs, health and fitness people. It is literally, and Monica can attest to this, it's one of the most amazing books that's ever been written on health and fitness. It literally is. It's so good that it's sad that it's not publicized and it's not bigger. It should be a bestseller. Um, if it was marketed correctly on the Internet, he marketed it traditionally and, you know, he and I could debate, you know, his marketing tactics when he marketed it, but it still sells. Monica and I have sold him thousands of books, you know, from our website. Uh, but it's an amazing book. It's 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 something that every person should have on their coffee table who's committed to living a life, you know, of uh, of being fit and, and and full of vigor and energy because it's just it's just an amazing book. So, but you know, once I read that book, I, I just started reaching out to him through social media, and I said, hey, look, you know, I'm actually writing a book on testosterone replacement therapy. I'm not a doctor, but I've been a, a patient of testosterone replacement therapy with certain select doctors for almost 14 years. Um, you know, I have a, I have a really, uh, you know, my background is in molecular biology and endocrinology from, in college, um, so I'm technically like a doctor. I just don't have a medical license or, or a medical degree, uh, and I'm writing this book. And would you be interested in helping me out? Now, normally, Josh, when I send that kind of message to doctors, you know, they run, you know, 250 miles an hour away from me because I'm not a doctor. You know, and very, very rarely will you find a doctor that wants to get in bed with somebody who's not a doctor because. You know, they immediately start you know, thinking, oh, God, there's risks because he's not a doctor and I don't want him to say something that he's not allowed to say. Because 
unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your perspective, the FDA and the DEA, um, they look at doctors with a lot of scrutiny um, who are prescribing testosterone. But so, so the issue is, is that the DEA and the FDA really looks at doctors um, with a lot of scrutiny when they start prescribing testosterone. So again, back to the whole subject of you know, me reaching out to doctors, very, very rarely do they get back to me. Well, Dr. Osborne was completely different. I mean, like literally from me reaching out to him on Twitter, within one hour he got back to me and sent me this awesome professional email and he said, Jay, we don't know each other, but you sound like a guy that I would definitely be interested in. Because he obviously started reading my site. He started researching me. He did his homework. He, you know, he, started, he started searching me, right, like we were talking about in real estate. Um, and he did his homework and he found out who I was and he obviously saw a lot of my articles that had been indexed across the web. And he was you know, very professional and he said, I would love to talk to you about that. So long story short, um, you know, here we are, I think 17 months later, you know, I'm actually his patient. Monica is also his patient from an anti-aging standpoint. And uh, he and I started writing the book on TRT like hardcore. When was it, Monica? Like June of last year? Yeah. I think it, was, it, was, it was about June. Um, Josh, we were really officially finished with the book by November. Uh, we submitted for legal review with like one of the highest level performance enhancement uh, slash uh, testosterone replacement therapy attorneys in the world. His name is Dr. Rick Collins. He's actually a doctor himself, Rick Collins. And he wrote me back um, a really interesting email. This was back in November of last year saying, look, you know, I can't give you a legal review. Um, your subject is a very hot button subject. It's looked at by not only the FDA, but the DEA. Um, it's, a lightning, it's a lightning rod of scrutiny, you know, so I can't, in, in all honest, honesty, um, offer you a, a firm legal review telling you that you'd be free from any kind of legal jeopardy if, you know, if, if, if they wanted to look into you. So it really scared both me and Dr. Osborne. Um, and so we said, you know what, we got to put this book on on, on, uh, on hiatus right now. We've got we to figure out another strategy because if you know if if we publish this book and it you know creates a it ruffles, ruffles a bunch of feathers you know in Congress or somewhere in the FDA because the way it works with testosterone and, and, and really it's a whole other subject for a whole other podcast. But um, the, the 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 urology board of America, like all the urologists, have um, have a huge lobby in, in, inside uh, Capitol Hill. Um, for testosterone because they were the guys that first started like six or seven years ago prescribing it in their practices because honestly, Josh, it's a revenue stream for them. Now, unfortunately, urologists don't know jack shit about testosterone for the most part. I'm not saying at all of them. There's always good doctors everywhere, but the average urologist doesn't know jack shit about testosterone, but they prescribe it. They fuck up their patients, blah, blah, blah. All these things happen, you know, so it, it, it's, it's a weird situation, but because they have such a powerful lobby, um, you know, the attorney was like, you know, you got to be really careful with that, this type of subject matter. You know, you don't know whose uh, feathers you're going to ruffle. So anyway, we sidetracked the book. Um, the law changed again in, in March of this year, in the very, very beginning of March. You may have seen it. It was actually all over the news for like three or four days. They changed the warning labels. Uh, the FDA or the DEA ruled uh, that they're going to now put black box holographic warning labels on all testosterone products. So you know, when you first see that or when we first heard that, we're like, oh, wow, this makes the, this makes it worse. But then, you know, we actually started reaching out to different attorneys asking about it. And they were like, well, actually, no, it protects you further because now the, the, um, the not only the insurance companies, but the pharmaceutical manufacturers of testosterone itself are now in, are protected because, you know, now they're saying, well, guess what, Mr. Attorney, if somebody dies because they use testosterone, you can't sue us, you know, un un arbitrarily saying, well, it was probably testosterone that led to their issue. So that said, um, Dr. Osborne and I were like, wow, we're, jump we're chomping at the bit. You know what? We're going to get our book out there now um, and, uh, and, and, and all is back on. So that was, you know, literally like about a month ago. A month and a half ago, and uh, and so now we're we're scaled we're we're, we're scaled full scale to uh, to launch the book. We're probably we're probably going to publish the book sometime in the middle of May. Um, it may be it may be a little bit later, um, and it's going to be actually timed with. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a second, but our SOAR seminar and our SOAR seminar is a seminar that Dr. Osborne and I and a couple other people, uh, a really famous ex Navy U.S. SEAL and a couple other people, Monica's of course um, I'm part of the group. Um, it's a, it stands for Serious Optimal Anti-Aging Regimen, and it's a, it's the only seminar series like it in the whole world. Um, it's a place where people will come 
in over three days, they will they will obviously uh, meet with Dr. Osborne. They will be clinically evaluated. They will they will have all these amazing tests done, like genetic DNA testing, brain speed testing, muscle biopsy type stuff, like amazing, like really high level testing that's done to tell you and you know all of the potential of your body as a physique. It will actually be able to tell you too, like what diseases that you are genetically predisposed to, and not only predisposed to, but are going to probably have, you know, in the next 20 to 25 years of your life. In addition to that, we also um, spend a whole day um, on Saturday doing Navy SEAL stuff with them, which, you know, that's a big type thing going on around the country right now where people go to, like, uh, you know, extreme SEAL experience. I'm sure you've heard of all these things where they spend four or five days days getting Navy SEAL stuff. Ours is not really that. It's more about SEAL mindset and also spending a little bit of time on the beach early in the morning when the sun's up with like tactical SEAL training. Um, and then the other two days, uh, we, we obviously are giving them really high level lectures about anti-aging and, and then testosterone replacement therapy and we talk about the book. Um, we, actually, we actually take them to a gym and we have a mobility expert and uh, an exercise physiologist specialist um, diagnose their, their form and their technique. So, and you know this, Josh, because you have a gym background, but the average person has no fucking idea when they train, right? They go to the gym. I mean, most people go to the gym 25, 30 years of their life, and they still have no fucking idea what they're doing, right? They show up, but they don't know how to perform, you know, correct exercise technique. And it's unfortunate because most trainers are horrible too, and then they don't, you know, help them. You, you can tell I'm very passionate about the subject, but like at this seminar, these people are going to come, anyone, it doesn't matter what condition. I mean, we don't want you know, a morbidly obese person to come to this, even though it would, we would refuse them because obviously we want them somewhat be able to train in the gym, right? We don't want somebody that has like limitations where they can't go to the gym, but we are literally going to make sure that over the time you spend in the three days you're at the seminar that you are literally going to go back home knowing how to perform exactly you know, um, foundational strength training movements. Not only be able to perform them exactly as you should, but also like understanding around whatever limitations you may have because of you know anatomical differences, um, you know limb length issues, uh, bio bi like biomechanical leverage issues. You know because you have like long arms or long skinny legs or whatever. So it's 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 an awesome seminar. Like Monica and I are so super motivated about it. You know, Dr. Osborne, you know, doing all these tests. Um, and then, you know, doing the, the Navy SEAL stuff on Saturday morning, like people will come to that seminar and they will leave a better person. Yeah. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And just, just the knowledge that you're going to gain from that seminar. So anyway, the book is going to come out sometime in the middle of May. Um, it's going to be obviously appended so that, you know, people that come to the seminar will get a copy of that book. We're, we are also working on Get Serious Volume 2 Advanced Strategies. That's what we were just in Florida for over this week. So honestly, bro, like in the, in the next six to nine months, you know, we're going to publish two awesome books and put on the seminar. Right now the seminar is going to be quarterly, uh, but I anticipate it uh, because of the demand and the people that we're going to, you know, be working with. It'll probably end up becoming monthly. Thank you for listening. Do not forget to follow me on Facebook, Joshua Smith GSD, on Twitter, at Joshua Smith GSD, Instagram, Joshua Smith GSD. Make sure to also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Type in Joshua Smith, and I'm the good-looking cat at the top. If you haven't already, go to www.joshuasmithgsd.com and subscribe to our email list. You'll get these interviews sent to you via email, along with my blog, videos, updates, and all that other fun shit. As always, make sure you're taking action. Take all this golden information that, that uh, you're getting delivered here and make sure you're applying it. Information without implementation is the start of delusion. So implement. Take massive levels of action. Get your hustle on. Get into GSD mode and go dominate. Peace out, guys, and see you next time.